What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the most important things for inferencing that are going to make you way faster in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, and so the easiest way to do inferencing, right, is to mouse over a point and then move your mouse and move it in a direction, right? And what SketchUp is going to do is it's going to try to find these different directions like this, and it's going to kind of like pull your object in those directions. So that's super valuable because you can use this in order to really quickly um, figure out what is going to be along the axes in here so that you know you're drawing objects that are in alignment, right? So that's really easy. What, a, what some people know is that you can also, if you hold the shift key, you can lock an inference to a direction, right? So if I move my mouse over here, and right now if I hold shift, nothing is happening. But then if I hold down the shift key, it's going to lock to the green axis. Well, now what that means is that means that I can move my mouse wherever I want, and this is going to be locked to that axis. Well, I can move my mouse over other objects and use them as inferences right here. So that shift inference locking is super powerful. Next, we'll draw these up to like seven feet. So now, one of the things that a lot of people don't know about is you can also, when you're inferencing, so I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode right here. Not only can you hold the shift key, you can also tap the left, right, or up arrow keys in order to lock an inference to a direction, right? So now what that means is that means when I have the move tool active, I don't need to hold the shift key down in order to place this. I can just activate the tool and this works with moving, copying, whatever. I can activate the tool and even if my mouse is kind of out here, I can tap like the right arrow key right here. Notice what that's going to do is that's going to lock this to the red axis. You can use this in order to really quickly lock you're inferencing to different directions using the keyboard shortcut keys. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't know about is you can also use this to lock the rotate tool to a direction. So for example, let's say that I wanted to rotate this object based on the central point over here. And so now let's say that I wanted to rotate this object based on the central point right here. And so what a lot of people don't know with something like the rotate tool is you can actually tap the Q key and you can lock a direction by tapping left, right, or up arrow keys on your keyboard. So you know how sometimes it can be a little bit tricky trying to make this tool lay down or be kind of in the direction that you want it to be? Well, as soon as I activate that tool by tapping the Q key, if I tap the up arrow key, this is going to lock this to the blue axis. So then, what that means is that means that I can really easily pick a point like this, and then I can rotate these objects. And so where that gets extremely valuable is say that you have a cube like this one. So and say that I've got this object and I'm going to just rotate it and we'll use these little pieces right here. So and so say that you've got a shape like this one and you want to rotate it. Well, there's no real good way to rotate this object. Like you can, you can mouse over it here and if you're lucky, it will lock to the blue axis. But if you tap the Q key and then tap the up arrow key, you're going to be able to lock this to that blue axis like this um, in order to quickly rotate this along that blue axis. But if you wanted to rotate it along the red axis, you could type the left arrow key and then find a spot on this object and rotate it this way. So that can be extremely valuable as well. And so there is one direction we haven't talked about that is actually extremely valuable and that's the down arrow key. So say that I was to select this object, tap the Q key and I want to rotate it along the surface right here but I need to pick a point that's off of the object in order to do that. Well, what you can do is if you mouse over this face, tap the down arrow key, what it's gonna do is it's going to lock this to that direction. So then if you were to take your mouse and move it off of this object like this, notice how it's gonna stay aligned to that location. You can toggle that off by tapping the down arrow key again, but notice how each one of these faces, if I tap the down arrow key right here, it's going to lock it to that direction. And then you can then use this in order to rotate the object in that direction, even if your mouse isn't on the surface anymore. 
And so one cool thing about this is you can also use it in order to rotate your rectangle tool. So when you activate your rectangle tool, it's kind of like the rotate tool, right? In the sense that you mouse over a surface like this, and it's going to um, try to match whatever surface you mouse over. Well, if you tap that left, right, or up arrow key when you activate the tool, so if I tap R left or R right like this, you can actually use this in order to lock this to that red direction. So now I don't have to mess around with trying to like find something to inference to or anything like that. I can just kind of move my mouse in this direction and we're locked to the red direction. And then if you want to toggle that off, you can always just tap that same direction again like this. But in this case, say that we wanted to do like three quarters of an inch, comma, three quarters of an inch right here. And then push pull this across we can use that rectangle we created in order to create um, the wood on the very top of our pergola, like this. And so in this case, I would just use that holding the shift key and moving my mouse over here to use the move tool in copy mode. And then I would type in divided by a number of copies. So divided by 15, something like that. And we're good to go. Remember to model things with components, by the way. So if you do need to make a change like this, you can definitely do that. And then finally, one other thing is say that you do have an object like this one that you wanna work with and you need to model it on an off axis, right? So say you were gonna place it in a direction like this. Well, the problem with placing it in a direction like this is if you wanna come in here and make any kind of changes or anything like that, it's really difficult to do, right? If I wanted to use the rectangle tool to draw in here to draw a surface. Well, the problem with that is it's really hard to actually find the direction that this is going to be. Now you could draw with lines and all of that, right? But that's not necessarily gonna be ideal. If you wanna change the inferencing direction, the inferencing direction is based on the axis direction in SketchUp. So what that means is that means that if I was to come in here, activate the axis tool and then realign my axes with this object right here. So I'm just gonna click, click again like this. Notice how my axes have changed direction. Well, what that means is that means that my inference locking has also changed direction because it aligns with your model axes. So what we've done is now we have the ability to lock to this red axis right here and draw on this surface. And so that means you can change the axis direction in SketchUp, which is extremely valuable. And then note that say that I was to create a copy of this line right here, right? So you can move your mouse and you can find a perpendicular direction like this. And so what this is doing, right, is the first time I tap that down arrow key, it's finding me the direction that's aligned with this edge. But if I tap it again, what this is gonna do is it's going to give me the ability to create an edge like this one that's perpendicular to the one that's in here. So now I could just type in a value, right? Like three and a half or whatever. Um, and I'm able to quickly create a face in here, just like this, in order to model like a corner support. Like this. But then when you're done with this, so say that you've modeled out the support however you want it to go, right? So something like this, just for simplicity's sake. And then you wanted to put the axes back, all you have to do is right click on one of the axis lines, click on the option for reset, and that's gonna reset your model axes to what you originally had in here. So incidentally, if you do adjust the axes like this, that's also going to adjust the global direction that you can mirror objects, right? So if I take one object, this is based on the object's internal axes, that's no big deal. But if you select two objects like this and your axes aren't aligned, so if I activate the flip tool right here, notice how there's no option for toggling local axes. And so if I try to mirror this, this isn't really going to work, right? But if you do take the global axes align them right here like this, and then take these objects and try to align them. Notice how this aligns with those axes and you can use this in order to mirror those objects really quickly. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew about all of this, if you're using it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. Um, I'll link to some other similar topics on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.